Good morning, Calvary. Hope that you're having a great day today. Wherever you're watching from, I hope that uh, this day finds you well. I want you to think back on a moment uh, to being a kid again, and not just the, the summer fun, out drinking from the garden hose and enjoying the sun and the grass on your feet, but I want you to think back to more cooler days. I want you to think back to winter time. It's Christmas, or rather Christmas season. You're getting ready, Christmas is approaching, decorations are up, the tree is up, lights outside are hung, and you're at the kitchen table writing your Christmas wish list. What's that look like for you? See, for me, it was always a time to write down these long, extravagant lists of what I want. I would think about every possible new toy that I had seen at a friend's house or on a commercial on TV, and I would write that down, hoping that I'd wake up Christmas morning and all of it would be there under the tree. Now, this is especially ironic for me. I have a November birthday, so I would do this right on the heels of getting gifts for my birthday and having new toys and new things to enjoy. Because as a kid, the, the gift and understanding of contentment isn't as present as maybe it is when we're an adult. Or at least maybe we're not as aware of the need for that. But see, this doesn't wane just with our age and increasing in uh, the, the calendaring of our life. Because when we get to adulthood, we're looking at the next car, the bigger house. We want the boat. We want the thing to have fun on. We want the bigger salary so that we can go on better vacations with nicer amenities. We want the stainless steel appliances rather than the white or black ones. We want the nice flooring instead of the old linoleum tile. We want all new things all the time. Only in as adult, it's not centered around a Christmas wish list because we know that the guy in the red jacket isn't actually bringing the things that we want. So we live in a world that's always pursuing more, always pursuing next, always desiring something else, always desiring that which we don't have, which makes the truth of Scripture that much more powerful. Uh, Hebrews 13.5 says this. It says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, God understands that, that we have this desire for more money, more stuff, more things in our life. And he's reminding us here that he is with us. He is providing for us. And so we need to be actively running away from the love of money and the love of stuff in our life. Now, it's true that we need money. We've got to pay our mortgage or our rent. We've got to buy food. We've got to provide the, the essentials, and that happens through working and earning money. But we also have to understand that it all comes from God. God is the, the author and provider of all good things in our life. And so we need to trust Him that He's going to continue to provide and get to that place of being content with what we have. See, I, I heard a quote a long time ago that said contentment is not getting what you want, but being satisfied with that which you already have. And so let me encourage you today to look at the ways that God has blessed you, the things that God has provided for you, your family, your friends, your, your situation, the, even the monetary and, and possessions that he's given you. And take a step towards gratitude and contentment, saying, God, thank you for providing these things. And say a prayer like that. Thank you for, for providing these things. Help me to find contentment in them and not long for what I don't have. And see how God shows up and works in your life and blesses you through that simple act of being content with what you have. I hope that you have a great and content day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.